as you all know, UK has left the European Union in the beginning of this year. And we are all in a transitional state and the formal exit is going to happen by the end of this year. So there are a few changes that's going to happen on uh, from the 1st of January 2021. So what I thought is I had been doing a bit of research to understand what the differences are going to be for my business. So I thought I'll make a quick video for you guys to understand as well how it's going to affect your business. Just a bit of a uh, you know heads up that there are going to be several links in this video because all of our circumstances circumstances every business is different your circumstances will be different as well so I would say you please take the time to go through each link that I'm going to put in this video and understand how it's going to affect your business because as I said it's going to be different for everyone so let's begin first let's go to the website where you will get a personalized report of uh, you know how the changes are going to affect from the 1st of January 2021 so it's called gov.uk forward slash transition as in all the other videos I'm going to put all the links in the description below so you can take your own time and then have a look at these links. So we are on that page now where uh, you can get to find out what are the things that is going to affect uh, your business or your personal circumstances after Brexit. Here what you'll do is there are a few questions that you need to answer so you can get your personalized list of actions. You can also sign up for emails to get the updates for what you need to do. Before I show you those questions, let's go a bit more at the bottom of the page because there are a few other links that you can go through as well. As I said, I'm not going to go through each and every link here. You can click according to what um, your circumstances are. If you're importing goods from the EU, exporting goods to the EU, moving goods uh, to or from the Northern Ireland. So these are the different links that you can go through and see what are the changes that you need to expect. So let me quickly take you through the list of questions. Here they are asking like basic questions like what nationality are you? So British or Irish of a nationality it is you have to click on to that. Where do you live? UK, Ireland or any other EU country? Then continue. Then what do you do? So if you're working in the UK, studying in the UK or retired. So you click on to these, uh, you know, relevant questions and then you answer them. As I said, you are at the end of all this. You'll uh, get a list of things that you will have to keep an eye on. So importing wise what's going to happen is because EU and UK is going to be different UK is going to have a UK specific tariff which is called a UK global tariff which is going to replace all this while it used to be called a EU common external tariff that is a CET. So it used to be a EU tariff now it's going to be a UK tariff. You'll have exceptions if your country has a special trade agreement with the UK or if the goods are coming from a country where it does not pay any duty or has a less duty because it comes under the general scheme of preferences where you get a special preference for paying the tariff that is from the developing countries. So to get these, uh, the GSP rates, which is called the general scheme of preferences rates, you have to show the proof that it originates from the country where, uh, you know, you are claiming the GSP rate for. It can be the GSP certificate or it can be, like I mentioned, the REX number from the exporter as well. If you haven't already seen my previous video, which is um, importing into the UK, where I mention all the documents that you require, even including the GSP rates or the, uh, you know, showing the country of origin, you can check out that video and then there you will see more details of these and for more details on the UK's general scheme of preferences you can check out the link below. So we are on the page now where you can find these uh, GSP rates and the country in which uh, category comes under. So here you can see the details of the UK generalized uh, scheme of preference. So this might be too much to read for you. So I'll just quickly go through the important stuff on this page which might be relevant to you and then you can have a read through if you wish. So um, here you can see that uh, the UK GSP has got three types of framework. So one is least developed countries general framework and enhanced framework. So least developed countries framework means if you are importing from these countries, you have a quota free access and nil rate of import duty. So this is the list of countries where you get that preferential rate. You can see if your country comes under this category. The next one is general framework where again if you are importing from these countries you have a reduced rate of import duty. In the other one it was nil rate here it will be a reduced rate of import duty. 
you can download the entire uh, you know the general scheme of preference if you want using this link and um, this will be the list of countries if which, which will be included under the generalized scheme of preferences then you have got the enhanced uh, framework which mostly is not uh, coming under any of those categories so as i said earlier to be uh, eligible to get your reduced uh, duty rate you need to show that your goods originate from a gsp country so if you do not submit those uh, origin requirements then you will end up paying the full import duty which is the non gsp rate so you can see a bit more at the bottom saying that evidence requirements so that is the uh, evidence requirements you have to submit a valid proof of origin valid proof of origin can be a gsp form you can click on to that and find out what it is or an origin declaration which shows that the goods are originating from the gsp country there is also something called the rex number which is the registered exporter system number where what he does is he gives his rex number registration number on the invoice and he states that the goods originate from the gsp country so if he gives his valid rex registration number on the invoice then you will be eligible for the gsp rate can go further down and you can see other details as well and here if you have any question about uk gsp you can contact them where you can fill up your details your business details and your query and then they'll get in touch with you now let me take you to the website where you can find out what the uk trade tariff is going to be from 1st of january 2021 so you have to be aware that this only shows the tariffs that will be applied to the goods at the border when you are importing into the uk it doesn't include the other uh, duties like vat so here what you can do is you can search using either the uh, commodity code or the product description or a combination of these two but if you don't know your commodity code you can put your product description or what you can also do is you can go to gov.uk forward slash uh, trade tariff and if you're finding difficulty in finding the commodity code there what you can do is you can check out my previous video where i have done a tutorial on calculating your import duty and vat there i have shown you how to find your commodity code so let's assume you don't know your commodity code and i'm just going to put um, something like coconut and then i want to find out what the duty rate is for coconut and uh, so yeah, as you can see you'll have to decide which category your product comes under as well because if it's a desiccated coconut it is it will be this commodity code fresh coconut it will be this if it's uh, frozen like frozen it will be this commodity code so you have to see what category your product comes under as you can see this column shows a commodity code this shows a description this shows a common external tariff common external tariff is the existing eu tariff this one is the uk global tariff which will be the new uk tariff and this column shows if there is any change or not change from the existing one to the new one so as from these three you can see these are all zero percent and there has been no change so if they say no change that means your existing tariff remains the same so there is no change to your existing tariff currency conversion that says that see here 13 percent plus 5.3 euros that has become 12% plus 4.4 gbp which means if you have been paying 13% plus 5.3 euros till now from january you will be paying it in pounds which means you are affected by a conver conversion in the currency of euro to pounds another change category will be simplified simplified means it has been reduced down to the nearest whole number so it has been rounded off to 12 or it has been rounded off to the nearest uh, whole number so you might have been paying 13 percent now it will be rounded off to 12 from uh, the first of january so that is what is simplified then you've got the next category that is liberalized so for these commodity codes you will see 5.5 percent has become zero percent so liberalized means it has been rounded down to zero it has been reduced to zero so which is really really blessing if you've got into that category so if you've got these commodity codes and you have been paying 5.5 percent duty you will be paying only zero percent so there's no duty on that so these are the changes that you will see on your commodity code and the uh, the uk global tariff you should remember as i said earlier 
the if you are importing from a gsp country then this will not be affecting you because you will be anyway paying a reduced tariff rate so these are only the standard tariff rates that are shown so now let's see you know if you are exporting to the eu from the uk let's say any place in the europe like uh, france or ireland or uh, you know greece or any other places in europe if you are exporting from uk into the eu you need you'll have a few, a few more changes as well for food products that's what i've done the research on for food products there are a few labeling changes on the packaging you will have to show a food business operators address i call it the fbo address showing that you have an address in the european union so what you have to be aware there is you cannot show an email address just as your office address you can't have a po box address like how, sometimes how people have it in the uk that is not allowed as well so either you'll have to have a virtual address or the easiest thing would be the person who is you know the customer who is buying from you in the eu you can ask if you can use their address on the packaging of your products for more details you can check out the next link below if you want to get more information about how your business is going to be affected after brexit or if you want to contact the helpline of uh, you know the brexit imports and uh, exports there is the next link where you can contact them you can you, you can fill up the contact page and you can even uh, you know get in touch with them and see what are the changes that's going to be coming up we are on the final page this is where you can uh, go and contact them in case of any doubts regarding imports and export or even the brexit so you've got various options here as you can see you've got the online option of contacting them online or you can contact them over the phone and there is an option for sending by post as well so that was just a quick wrap up of uh, you know the things that i have done a research on uh, how things are going to change obviously as i said there is uh, things are still in an unsure state so i'll keep you posted once more announcements come in and uh, you know hope uh, you all have a great day thank you bye bye